Nikola Tesla spent the last days of his life in a swanky hotel in New York, and he never paid the bill for a very interesting reason. He did a deal with the hotel manager because in his hotel safe were the secrets to the death ray. Hey, welcome back. You've probably heard that story. It turns out when the safe was opened, there was nothing of significance in the safe and the hotel didn't really benefit from Tesla's gift. But I think Tesla did give them a gift, an ultimate gift, the secret to how his death ray was powered. So let me bust some myths, as I'm obviously a myth buster and read to you what actually happened on the day after Tesla died. This is the classic story. Tesla had left a mysterious package in the vault, a supposed prototype of his death ray. When the physicist and others looked on, the hotel manager opened the vault, bracing for an explosion. So the other myth is that the the gift left by Nikola Tesla to the hotel manager was actually booby-trapped, and anybody who opened it before his death would blow up. How it would be de-booby-trapped after he died, I don't understand. Tesla claimed that what was inside the vault would easily pay his $20,000 missing hotel bill. Sounds good. So the story of the hotel and the gift of the death ray got through to the US government and they sent John G. Trump, Donald Trump's uncle, who was an MIT physicist, to be the brave soul that went into the safe and saw what Tesla had left the hotel management. He was a bit nervous about the booby trap story and says that Trump steeled himself and began tearing off brown paper. He must have laughed at what he saw underneath. Now listen to this really carefully because this is the basis of a brand new way of thinking about Nikola Tesla. What he found was a wheat stone bridge. Now I'm going to explain what a wheat stone bridge really is and you will hopefully begin to understand why it wasn't as described. It was just a tool for measuring electrical resistance. Common mundane device probably just some old junk. It was certainly not a death ray, not even close. But oh yes, it was. It was the missing key to how the death ray was powered. Let me take you back to 1935. So the brilliant but a man ahead of his time, in my opinion, Nikola Tesla came up with a device called a teleforce. It was a defensive weapon that used a stream of plasma and then effectively a particle accelerator by splitting up the atoms of everyday matter using vast amounts of electricity, millions of volts. And these subatomic particles would transit along the hollow tube of plasma, like a plasma conduit, and impact whatever went into the sphere of influence. Now, basically, it's like this. It's like a Tesla globe. You can see here, when I place my hand on it, a streamer goes up and hits my hand. Imagine in that streamer was subatomic particles like tiny bullets, that's what Nikola Tesla described them, that would go bang, 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 and destroy the plane, boat, tank, or whatever it hit. Tesla called it his teleforce and very much wanted the United States to have it around their coastlines. But strangely, they were interested. So he went to his favorite next ally, and that's the United Kingdom. This was 1930s. Germany was getting too big for its boots, and it was obvious that maybe the Germans were going to start some kind of Third Reich. So Nikola Tesla correctly thought that Britain would really benefit by having a chain of these defensive teleforce or death ray stations on its coastline. Any invading Germans or anybody else, I suppose, would be zapped in the air or ships. And it would be a small amount to pay for a, a totally effective defensive system. But Tesla's timing was terrible. Oh. 
morning, I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. He visited London in the mid-30s when Neville Chamberlain was Prime Minister. Now Chamberlain, of course, had grown up with the Great War, not World War I. Why did they call World War I, World War I? It's quite a pessimistic numbering, isn't it? Or did they just know it was the start of a franchise? You have to call it the Great War. And he didn't want to have anything to do with the thought that there could be another war around the corner. So he was looking for peace. And Chamberlain tried to do a deal with the nice Mr. Hitler. Now, I'm going to say something very controversial here. You're going to be screaming at your iPads or your phones. And that is, Hitler thought that Britain was his best ally. Oh, hang on, Simon, what are you trying to say here? Many of Adolf Hitler's regime's ideas were very much what Hitler thought Britain was already doing with its very controversial royal family and anti-Semitism. And it seems that Hitler got Britain completely wrong. British people, of course, hated Adolf Hitler. There might have been some support for his views up in the upper echelons, but average British people thought that Hitler was a monster. Correct. But Chamberlain thought Hitler was okay. Big mistake. And thought that if he could do a deal with him, because Hitler was interested in a deal with the UK, we would have peace in our time. How wrong he was. Enter Nikola Tesla, comes over probably on a ship, stays in a swanky hotel. This is very important. I think probably the Savoy in the center of London and meets Neville Chamberlain and Chamberlain's science officer, Mr. Tizard, and tries to sell the death ray to Britain. Tesla wasn't just a brilliant inventor, he was also a businessman and he wanted loads of money for his death ray and Britain really probably didn't have it and Chamberlain didn't want to spend that money on a war that he didn't think was going to happen but they were intrigued by a directed energy weapon device so what did Britain do while nice Mr Tesla was in a meeting or out buying an ice cream cone they raided his hotel safe and photographed the plans of the death ray secretly kept them so Britain could build their own death ray. And then they sent nice Mr. Tesla packing. Tesla never would talk about that meeting. He was so appalled that both his home country, United States, and his favorite ally, Britain, who he correctly thought could really benefit from a teleforce around the coast, weren't interested. It was his greatest disappointment. And in the end, the only people who actually paid him for his death ray was the Soviet Union. But that's another story. So what happened next? Well, it's really interesting. It's all back related to the Wheatstone Bridge in Tesla's hotel safe. So Britain had the plans, blueprints of a death ray, a particle accelerator that could produce this massive energy. They needed somebody to build it. Who could they turn to? Oh, there's a man up in Dundee who works for the Met Office who knows about the ionosphere and he knows about lightning and he knows about particle accelerators. Robert Watson Watt. Let's hire him and give him a budget to build Britain's own Tesla death ray. So that's what happened. Robert Watson Watt was given a budget. He was given a hut on Orford Ness in Suffolk right next to Red Russian Forest. Anyway, and he tried to build a death ray. Most of the components came from the UK Navy, who had an extensive store of high-powered components. And the deal was this. Also on Orford Ness was a flock of sheep. And he was told if he could kill a sheep at a couple hundred yards with a death ray, err, it would be a success. Robert Watson Watt tried everything. He built the machine and it didn't work. The reason it didn't work, and Robert Watson Watt told this back to Tizard, was 
I don't have enough power. This machine obviously requires millions of volts and we can produce thousands of volts. It will never actually work with the power supply that we have. I wonder what Tesla had intended. Right, what Tesla had intended was not to tell anybody he knew that he would be ripped off potentially. So he had 99% of the plans printed so you could build the machine. But the final bit of the equation, the power supply was only in Tesla's head. And only when Tesla was hired on the project would he reveal how to switch it on. Robert Watson Watt couldn't do that and the project was put on the back burner, as they say in Britain. So what you and I want to know is, how do you power a death ray? It's not that hard if you're Nikola Tesla, because you have a device that you've invented called the Tesla coil. The best way to understand how a Tesla coil works is to think of a swing. So you've got a child on a swing who's going whoosh, whoosh. When the swing comes back, it temporarily stops, changes direction and moves forwards again. If at the moment it stops and before it changes direction, you go bush, the swing will swing out further and then further, bush and further and further, bush. Millions of volts can be applied by adding a push at just the right moment. Tesla had built this and kept it secret. And to prove to you it worked, it was a Tesla coil type device that split the atom at the Cavendish Laboratory for the first time. You could rupture open normal atomic matter into subatomic particles using power using electricity and that's what they did. So what's that got to do with the Wheatstone Bridge that Tesla left the hotel management as payment for his bill? I know a man who can describe exactly how they work and you will begin to understand that you need the simple old Wheatstone Bridge circuit to find the exact moment when to push the swing. That's what Tesla left in his safe, the key to turning on the death ray. What a fabulous story, but I'm not an electronic expert. I don't really understand how a Wheatstone bridge works and its application, but this guy does. And in part two, Mark, is going to build us a Wheatstone bridge and describe exactly how it functions. And hopefully we will begin to understand how Nikola Tesla used it to power the death ray. I think that's a really interesting story. And it's so exciting to collaborate with Mark, one of my favorite people on YouTube. If this is the type of film that you enjoy, please give it a thumbs up to tell YouTube that this is something that you actually find interesting. And of course, look out for part two by subscribing and ringing the bell to this channel free of charge and you'll get a notification, I hope, when that film is published. I love digging into hidden histories for you and I hope you find them interesting. Thanks for watching.